Texas. Uh, I see a lot of regulars here today. Always, uh, we appreciate your support. And uh, to those of you who are attending this for the very first time, a special welcome to you as well. I'd like to give you a very brief orientation to what we do. You're going to hear synopses of two business bestsellers. These are true synopses. They are information transfers. We are not doing um, editorials. We are not doing critical reviews. Uh, we are giving you the essence of the business books in 15 minutes. And as I say most months here, if you hear something today that uh, conflicts with your values, your orientation, or your philosophy, or whatever that may be, uh, don't kill the messenger. We didn't uh, <laughs> write these books. We're just telling you what the authors say. Uh, you should have in your handout a presentation outline where you can follow us as we uh, cover the books and also a sheet of key quotes that you can get a flavor of the author's uh, actual language and uh, we always let you of course read that uh, at your own time. I'd like to begin then with the book called Tribes. If you would move to that handout, this is the uh, book by Seth Godin, and of course it has become a, a, a terrific bestseller. And I want to say as I read this book, I feel like I'm sitting in this guy's living room uh, with his feet up and I'm across from him and he is just talking to me. And uh, the book is full of uh, terrific insight from his perspective. Uh, there are no chapters in this book. In fact, my guess is the headers that you see in the book were put in by editorial staff people who insisted on them because it is just a free rolling book. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Seth Godin, he probably has one of the most uh, highly visited websites and interactive blogs that exist, and he is a marketing guru. Uh, he has really captured uh, the essence with books like Purple Cow and others ones that we've done here at the Book Synopsis about marketing. But this is not a book about marketing. This is a book about leadership and how leaders work with what he called tribes. And at the beginning of the presentation outline, you see the definition of what a tribe is. And he talks about how tribes are flourishing everywhere. The problem is, is that tribes have shortages of leaders. And as he says here, we need you. Leadership isn't difficult, but you've been trained for years to avoid it. So I went into the book and I called out what I thought was really the premise of what Godin is trying to do in the book called Tribes. And you see this under premise on your presentation outline. For the first time ever, everyone is expected to lead. The structure of the workplace makes it easier today to change things. The marketplace is rewarding organizations and individuals who change things and create remarkable products and services. It's fun to lead a tribe. And most of all, he says, there's a tribe of fellow employees or customers or investors or believers or lobbyists or readers just waiting for you to connect them to one another and leave them where they want to go. I thought you might enjoy um, a couple of examples of where tribes have actually operated. And one of the things I enjoy doing at these book synopses is reorganizing the author's books. Uh, and I, I don't know if they like that, but it's my synopsis, so that's what I'm going to do. So I move forward in the book, and these are two uh, examples of tribes. One is called CrossFit.com, and he says it's a tribe of slightly crazy, okay, really crazy fitness fanatics. They are people who on any given day will do a routine like this. 15 handstand push-ups followed by one pull-up followed by 13 handstand push-ups followed by three pull-ups followed by 11 handstand push-ups followed by five pull-ups followed by nine handstand push-ups. I would finish, but I'm getting tired. Uh, and, and what they do is, is they time their fitness routine against thousands of other people who are doing the same thing. And um, on the day that Golden went there, 400 people had posted their times on a workout and they have certification uh, for people who do certain things. And it's all uh, led by one person, his name is Greg Glassman. And he says, the tribe grows because individuals proudly um, segregate themselves and speak up on behalf of the tribe, simultaneously recruiting and having new members. Uh, so that might be a fun place for you to go. Now another example of a tribe is one that is not led by an individual. They have leadership, but it's actually shared leadership, and this is called patientslikeme.com. 
And what happens is people will go on here and share the details of their diagnosis and their current health care. And uh, it is growing. People are sharing what's happening to them and how things are working and so forth. And uh, what Godin says is, is that even though they do not have a single person who leads the tribe, there is leadership there and it's shared. They found a tribe that desperately wanted to communicate and that gave them the tools to do so. They make the tribe tighter, that's leadership as well. Leading in or backing off, but not doing nothing. And I want to say that as I read this book, it is very clear that Seth Golden is not only a leader, uh, but he is a risk taker. Uh, he has every characteristic that you would talk about as a leader, and that's what gives him, I think, a lot of credibility as he wrote this book. He has vision, he asks questions, he challenges, and uh, above all things, he takes risks, and he's encouraging you to do that as you work with tribes. If you look at back at your outline again, the, uh, he talks about that how the Internet has eliminated barriers to how tribes work, such as geography, cost, and time, but the Internet is just a tool, and as he says, the real power of tribes has nothing to do with the Internet and everything to do with people. You don't need a keyboard to lead. You only need the desire to make something happen. And what he says to amplify that is this means that existing tribes are bigger. But more important, it means there are now more tribes, smaller tribes, influential tribes, horizontal and vertical tribes, and tribes that could have never existed before. Tribes you work with, tribes you travel with, tribes you buy with, tribes that vote, that discuss, that fight, tribes where everyone knows your name. The professionals at the CIA are a tribe and so are the volunteers at the ACLU. There are literally thousands of ways to coordinate and connect groups of people that just did not exist a generation ago. All of it, he says, though, is worthless if you don't decide to leave. All of it goes to waste if your leadership is compromised or if, in fact, you do not have leadership at all.